before we start, let's have a short prayer first. Let us pray. Our loving and generous God, we praise and thank you for the bountiful blessings you have given us. Thank you for giving us a mind that can know and a heart that can love. Thank you for giving us the chance to continue learning amidst the pandemic that had caused a lot of changes in our lives. We are sorry for the times we have failed you. We humbly ask for your forgiveness. Father, help us stay focused on our studies. When learning becomes difficult, grant us the gifts of courage and enthusiasm. Grant us the grace to use our knowledge in making a difference to the lives of the people around us. All this we pray in your mighty name. Amen. Good morning, class. How are you today? Last meeting, we've discussed about online safety and privacy. Now, before we proceed to the next topic, let's have a short activity related to the previous topic we had. Here, you are going to identify whether the activity is commonly done online, is safe or unsafe. Okay, for number one, posting your personal information online, is it safe or unsafe? Number two, using the same password for all of your online accounts. Is it safe or unsafe? For number three, visiting arbitrary and unsecured websites. Is it safe or unsafe? Now, let's answer the activity. For number one, what is the correct answer? Yes, very good. The correct answer is unsafe. And what is the reason, class? It's because your personal information could be used by a malicious person to impersonate you and do transactions on your behalf. For number two class, what is the correct answer? Very good! The correct answer is unsafe. And what is the reason class? It's because it's just like having one key to access all of your online accounts. And lastly, for number three, what is the answer? Great! The correct answer is and safe. And why is that class? It's because some malicious websites host malwares that could harm your computer. Very good class. Indeed, you've learned from the previous topic we had. Now class, let's embark to another journey in ICT. Now, let's have another activity. Are you familiar class with the game for picks one word? What is the aim of the game? Very good! The activity that we are going to indulge today is related to four picks one word. Here, you are going to guess the word being shown in each pictures. Are you ready? Let's start! Okay, for number one, what is the answer? Correct answer is virus. Very good. For number two, it's a vast, it's mad up, persky is an example of antivirus. Very good. For number for number three. For number three is spam. Number four, for the last number. Okay. Okay, what is being shown in the picture? What is that class? Yes, that is Trojan horse. Very good. Now class, are you familiar with those words? Correct. 
Those words are related to malwares. Upon doing the activity class, what do you think is our topic for this afternoon? Yes, that's correct. We are going to discuss malwares. And here, you are going to determine and differentiate the types of malware. And of course, after determining the types of malware, you should be able to give ways on how to avoid malwares. So class, when you talk about malware, what comes into your mind? Yes, that's correct. Malware stands for malicious software. When we talk about malicious, it has an intention to harm your computer and your personal information. So why do malware exist, class? Actually, malware exists to make money in an illegal way. Why? Because through the creation of malware, someone can hack your account and do transactions on your behalf. So what are the forms of malware? The forms of malware are hacktivism, stealing, and others. When we talk about hacktivism, what comes into your mind? Yes, that is using someone's computer without his or her authorization. For example, if I'm going to use your computer without your consent, that is considered hacking. Why? It's because somehow you can get my personal information from my laptop, which is very important. Now class, if you are going to see a malware in real life, would you be able to recognize what type of malware it is? To answer that, let's have another activity. Okay, this activity is entitled, Can You Recognize Me? So how to play the game? In this game, you are going to guess the malware being described in each item. You will be given 10 seconds to answer. Write your answer in the illustration board. The student who will get a perfect score will receive an award from me. But remember class, to do the activity, with honesty. So are you ready? Let's start. One. A nasty program disguised as legitimate software. I repeat, a nasty program disguised as legitimate software. Your 10 seconds starts now. Okay, time's up. What is the answer? The correct answer is Trojan horse. Very good. Number two. For number two, a software program that causes advertisements to appear on your computer. Again, a software program that causes advertisements to appear on your computer. What is the answer? Your 10 seconds starts now. Okay, time's up. What is the answer? The correct answer is adware. Are you ready? For number three. A software program that can wipe out information on your computer and create major problems. Again, I'm going to repeat. A software program that can wipe out information on your computer and create major problems. Your 10 seconds starts now. Okay, time's up. What is the answer? Yes, the correct answer is virus. Okay, for number four, let's proceed to number four. Number four. 
it is unwanted email mostly from bots or advertisers again unwanted email mostly from bots or advertisers what is the answer your 10 seconds starts now Okay, time's up. What is the answer? Spam. Very good. And lastly, for number five, the last number, a destructive program that can get into your computers or networks and harm them by deleting, modifying, or sending out the data. I repeat, a destructive program that can get into your computers or networks and harm them by deleting, modifying, or sending out the data. Your 10 seconds starts now. Okay, time's up. What is the answer? The correct answer is warm. So, we got perfect class. Okay. To get your reward from me, kindly visit our NERPAD virtual classroom for more information. So how was the activity class? Upon doing the activity, can you now differentiate the types of malware? Okay, very good. Are you familiar class with the I love you virus? What do you think? Is I love you virus really a virus or a worm? Let's answer that by discussing deeper the types of malware. So what is the common malware that you know? Okay, that is virus. So what is virus class? Virus is a malicious program designed to replicate itself and transfer from one computer to another either through the internet and local networks or data storage. So what is a data storage? Um, example of uh, data storage is flash drive, also a hard drive, CD, or DVD. In short, anything that can store your data. Okay, the one you downloaded for free, some of them contains virus. Okay, that's why here in ICT Laboratory, I don't allow you to insert your flash drive. Why? Because if one computer get the virus, the other computer will get it too because this is connected through local networks. So how does virus looks like? Okay, this is an example of a virus. If you can observe, it replicates itself like this one. If you are going to click this one and it will replicate. Class, remember, Viruses are executable files, meaning it will not replicate and transfer from one computer to another if you are not going to open the file that contains the virus. It needs human intervention. Another type of malware that you should know is worm. Worm is the most dangerous type of malware. So what is worm? A worm is a malicious program that transfers from one computer to another by any type of means. Often, it uses a computer network to spread itself. Remember, worm is the most dangerous type of malware. Why do you think is the reason, class? It's because it is a standalone software, meaning unlike viruses, Worm doesn't need human intervention. Once it reached the system of your computer, depending on the worm you acquired, it could delete the files that you have there. Okay? If your Gmail is open and you are connected to internet, your letter will be in recent to your recipient list without your action. That is why worm is the most dangerous among malwares. Do you know this man? 
He's Onel de Guzman. He's the creator of the famous I Love You Virus. Do you still remember class the I Love You Virus? Okay, let's have a recap about the I Love You Virus. Okay. On May 4, 2000, a computer virus all over the world via emails that brought damages worth $10 billion. Again, $10 billion. The I Love You virus was called the grandfather of the modern email aware viruses. The I Love You virus comes in an email note with I Love You in the subject line and contains an attachment that when opened results in the message being recent in the recipient's Microsoft Outlook book and perhaps more seriously, the loss of every JPEG, MP3, and certain files in the recipient's hard disk. Now, let's move back to the question class. Is I love you virus really a virus or a worm? What is the answer? The correct answer is the I love you virus is a combination of virus and a worm. So why it is considered a worm? Because without human intervention, without human consent, it is being recent to Microsoft Outlook book and however it is a virus because for it to activate you need to click the attachment first okay are you familiar with this one have you seen this one yes very good this is an example of what we call the utility software or commonly known as antivirus and that is an example of a Trojan horse Okay. So what is a Trojan horse class? A Trojan horse is a malicious program that is disguised as a useful program but once downloaded or installed, it leaves your PC unprotected and allows hacker to get your information. The one you downloaded for free, those free antiviruses, some of them contains Trojan horses. Trojan horse's malware comes from the idea of Trojan horse. This one. Wherein a city was attacked through a Trojan horse because the horse acts as a gift from another city wherein there are armies hiding on it ready to attack. If we will be having an analogy, the horse would be the Trojan horse it would act as a useful program and the city will be your computer. Now, through Trojan Horse, it allows hacker to access to your computer. Remember class, the Trojan Horse, most of them, offers rogue security software. We talk about rogue that is fake security software. It tricks the user into posing that it is a security software. Others would say, update your payment for additional protection, but it is not. It actually unprotects your PC. That's why whatever you do, the virus are still there. Okay, be careful class. The one you installed for free, especially antiviruses, most of them have Trojan horses. This one class. Congratulations, it is repeated. The one that appears in your computer when you are connected online, pop-ups. For example, if you are going to visit a site, uh, a pop-ups that said, congratulations, so you want something. This is an example of an adware. It's an adware class. Those are pop-ups that are keep on reoccurring, no matter how you close the site. Okay? It slows down the performance of your computer. Some antivirus program doesn't detect an adware if it is a malicious or not. Again, not all adware are malicious software, but some of them are. That's why it is important 
to buy an antivirus that could block malware, especially adware. No glass. If you don't know the utility software to buy, to download or install, I recommend I recommend you to activate your Windows Defender. It is a default antivirus of your computer. Okay? All you have to do is to update it every time so it will give you an updated protection. Again, if you don't know what um what antivirus to download, just activate your Windows Defender. Okay. Another type of malware is spam. Have you received an email from advertiser wherein you did not expect that email? And it comes in bulk, paulit ulit ba siya, repeated messages? Those are spams. So what are spams? Spams are unwanted emails, mostly from bots or advertisers. It can be used to send malware. Okay. Again, it is a form of advertisements. Now, question. Why it is become a part of malware? Because most spam contains viruses. Now, if you are going to open the letter, uh, most spam contains images, wherein the images contains the virus. That ends our discussion for today. I hope you've learned something. So again, what is malware class? Yes, that's correct. Malware stands for malicious software. And what are the types of malware again? Yes, we have virus, worm, Trojan horse, adware, and spam. Let's have another activity. I call this activity as hashtag tweet na. So, what are we going to do? You are going to say hashtag sa lang if the statement is correct. And you will say hashtag fake news if the statement is incorrect and give the correct statement. Are you ready? Let's start. Again, direction, say hashtag sa true lang if the statement is correct and say hashtag fake news if the statement is incorrect and give the correct word. Okay, for number one, a virus is a malware that multiplies and infects other computers through flash drives. For number two, it is safe to reply an email you received stating that your mother's bank account is going to be forfeited if you are not going to respond to the email. And for number three, keyloggers are software that show pop-up ads. Okay, that's answer. For number one, what is the answer? Yes, that's correct. The correct answer is hashtag setrulang. For number two, yes, what is the answer? For number two, the correct answer is hashtag fake news. And for number three, what is the answer? Yes, that's correct. That is hashtag fake news. So who got perfect class? Now that you already know the types of malware, let's proceed with giving ways on how to avoid malwares. Now let's do it through spoken poetry. In this activity, you are going to give ways on how to avoid malwares through a spoken poetry composed of 50 words. Again, 50 words only. Submit your video in our Flipgrid classroom. And here is the code. Class, you will be graded using these rubrics. Content would be 40%, mastery would be 30%, and your delivery, of course, would be 30%, and a total of 100%. Again, do not 
forget to write your name and your section. And this is for your assignment. For your assignment, search for one news article online about ICT security related incidents, preferably those that happen in the Philippines. Use the following guide questions in your discussion. A. What assets were compromised? B. Who were the attackers or threats? C. What has been done to prevent the incident from happening in the future? Answer, go to nerpa.com and input the code. Again, do not forget to write your name and your section. Okay, that's all for today class. See you next week.